Tell me, though, what's his technique? That last strike, it seems invincible. Hello and welcome to Sons of the Dragon, the Immortal Iron Fist podcast. My name is Con McKenna. And I'm Carl Stout. And today we are covering Marvel Premiere 19, Death Cult. Or the Death Cult of Karakai. Titles were nearly consistent, but they just had to mess it up at some point. <laughs> so last issue it said, next week was Death Cult. The first page says Death Cult, but the title page says the Death Cult of Karakai. So... Whatever. And we still have the wonderful paragraph again carrying over. And it's the, the same. Last issue. Yeah, it's, it's the not exact same. At all. So there's still no mention of the dragon. And there's not even any mention of the power of the Iron Fist, really. Mm-hmm. Which I quite like. And last issue, we had Iron Fist confront Meacham only to spare him out of pity because he was a broken, paranoid, delusional cripple. Mm-hmm. And then he got killed anyway by some ninja. And now. Harold's daughter hates Iron Fist and Iron Fist pretty much stormed out so and that the first page picks right up on that now first what was happening around this time Carl um (laughs) (laughs) the um in comics the the biggest thing in this issue that is mentioned is in the letter page we actually have a third size ad for from the wilderness reaches of you know, comes a dreaded deadly wolverine but is he hero or the most dangerous new super villain ever the, did you say um wilderness reaches of canada yes for some reason canada just didn't come out so maybe your american foreign just senses the word canada whenever it's spoken <laughs> take off eh <laughs> so yeah and wolverine has sort of been a he's never been a super villain i guess but he's cause a lot of trouble for a lot of people so yeah, well you'll find the answer and the monstrous wendigo as well in the latest issue of the incredible hulk number 181 on sale july 30th at newsstands everywhere watch for it because now it's like 1500 dollars. <laughs> but i used to be a real wolverine fan i have a few trades but i never read that issue where he first appeared to be completely honest with you Ghost Rider and Wolverine are kind of what got me into actually collecting comics. I mean, I had been buying comics for years, but it was just random stuff. Buy an issue, read it, throw it in the closet. But then I read, it was a Marvel team-up actually with Spider-Man, where at the very beginning of the issue, Wolverine's tracking a deer and just sneaks up on it and touches it on the rear and spooks it off and laughs. <laughs> and I thought that was awesome that, you know, he had the abilities and skills to actually sneak up on a deer. And uh, and then Ghost Rider was just freaking awesome when you're a younger kid. Just like, oh, my God, he's like a demon, but he's good, and he's on fire, and he's on a motorcycle. You can't get any cooler than that. Was that Johnny Blaze or Danny Cash? Johnny Blaze. Yeah, Wolverine, uh, I guess he didn't get me into collecting comics, but he's one, some of the first times I bothered collecting stuff was Wolverine. I don't feel as fond of him now as I did, but that's just because he's... He's in everything. Yeah, it's ridiculous. and he always takes himself so seriously in pretty much everything. And mm-hmm. sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Like, uh, remembers Uncanny X-Force run with uh, Deadpool, Psylocke, Wolverine... Angel, that was like really good stuff, but Wolverine was just a total turd in that. He was unlikable. He was whinging all the time. He's like, "Oh, I've been through all this stuff." Blah blah. Shut up, dude. Just. <laughs> it, uh. Anyway, well, we talked about Wolverine because uh, he is debuting soon. So now we will go back to Iron Fist. What this podcast is actually about. I'm sure there's a few Wolverine podcasts already. Well, probably a few hundred. And they'll sneak to your bub. Um. So we've got this first page where we've got Meacham's impaled body on a sword that now seems to have grown an extra two feet. Yep. Uh, Harold Meacham's daughter just looking at her feet and Iron Fist 
strutting off with a sour taste caught in his throat or something like that. It's pretty much just the last page, the last panel of the last issue, but made into a full page. She has refused to believe your protest of in- innocence, and so you leave. And then he walks out towards the elevator, uh, her shrill voice having a pretty haunting effect on him, considering that's how he felt when he lost his own father, so he's feeling pretty confused right now. Then he has a flashback. Just a quick little one this time. Yes, and it's UT who's telling him that vengeance, my son, is a double-edged sword, for it cuts not only its victim, but also its perpetrator. And he's like, yep... Maybe I should have listened to one of those fortune cookie moments in those ten years in Shangri-La, but I didn't, so... And he just sort of walks out of the building. He's at a loss. He's as, alone, as we, friendless. As we discussed in the first few issues, UT from pretty much the get-go is like, this is not the way to do things. Pretty much. And so he walks out into the rain on the New York City street, and again, out of nowhere, someone's calling him by his name, Iron Fist. And of course it turns out to be an attractive woman with an umbrella. Who? Never mind who I am. Let's get you out of here and get you dry. But I didn't murder. <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> love that head. bit. <laughs> <laughs> Just like, dude, dude, if he gets interviewed by police, he's screwed. <laughs> and then we have Meacham's daughter talking with her uncle, who seems to know a little bit too much about this also. He looks pretty smug, old Uncle Ward. Yep, just chilling back. Oh, my brother's finally dead, huh? Hmm. Oh, what a shame. Shoot. So I guess I'm running the company now. <laughs> he should have thrown him off a mountain, too. But don't worry, we'll take care of this iron fist. And then we cut back to the city streets, where she's handing him clothes so he dresses like a pimp. Whoa, a pimp? This is it just a trench coat and a hat? Is that... uh, all right. Still, it looks pretty ridiculous. Yeah. And she tells him to go with him, and she can explain as much as she can, and Iron Fist has never heard of Stranger Danger, so he just gets into a taxi with her. Mm-hmm. And she gives the address, and then she explains that her name's Colleen Wing, but her profession is irrelevant, for it was her father who sent her to find him. He's a professor of Oriental Studies at Columbia University, and seems to know a great deal about you. For instance, the precise day you'd emerge from the Meacham building. Hmm... Hmm. Dun, dun, dun. He's a kind and gentle man, as well a man in great trouble. She pays for the taxi and they go outside. She walks up to the front door to unlock it and Iron Fist noticed, notices two strangers in the shadow. It has stopped raining, but they're both still holding their umbrellas over their heads. And they conceal the faces of assassins. Assassins. And they have hidden daggers. Yep. And they hurl them at Iron Fist and he lurches into a crouch and he does a double circular block but either way he defects them both deflects wax them both on, wax off of them yep and before the umbrellas have fallen to the ground the assassins have vanished and Colleen is just oblivious to what happened she's like where the hell did those umbrellas come from and it exchanged so rapidly and silently it went unnoticed by the girl she's like come on my father's waiting the professor actually saw the whole thing go down yep so let's cover the first little segment there. So let's talk about the title page. It's Iron Fist fighting four people, the ninjas in the background. All right, and for you Americans out there, when uh, Connor says title page, he's actually referring to the cover. Well, I'm sure you guys can figure that out. <laughs> you filthy Yankees. That's right. We're the best at everything. Yep. <laughs> America. America. <laughs> Alright, the cover page, sorry. Yeah, I really, really, really like this cover. Oh, it's a great, powerful cover, without a doubt. Yep. Um, it's actually been reproduced several different times in different language editions. The word bubbles and the death cult of the Kari Kari has been, have been moved around and obviously used in, in different languages being in the word bubbles but they've never t- ever tweaked the picture itself, which mm. shows right there how powerful it is that no one dared even mess with it. If anything, they moved the word bubbles around so you can actually see a little bit more of it. Yeah. Yeah, I, it's a really good cover. It's probably the best one we've had yet. It's, it's very reminiscent of the first issue. But the fir- it's better than the first one because of that Karate Killers thing which annoyed me. 
<laughs> and they're all wearing gears. He's beating them up. Whereas in this, he's just beating up these... Well, one of them's a cultist, it looks like, but the others seem to be just... Who knows? Cultists are everywhere. They're probably all cultists. But, uh, yes. So, yeah, he's just fighting the four people, and he's got the Iron Fist activated as he's palm-striking one in the face. And then Ninja just watches on in the background quite ominously. And I'm looking at the black and white, so I'll have to see if it's night time on the cover. Well, it's a purplish fade on mine, so yeah, I'm definitely going to go. It's after dusk. And, and again, I'm looking at the original issues, and the, uh, the coloring is hideous. <laughs> well, that's why I'm looking at the masterworks, and it looks great. <laughs> so, yeah, on, on mine, it's a blue sort of fade. It looks like it's just hit night. Or it's about to be morning, one of those two. And so the first page with that yin-yang sort of symbol at the background, I don't know what that actually is. Maybe it's a symbol yeah, of a cult. It's, it's very interesting. I can't even decipher because of the word blocks above yes. it. Like what it's like. There could be like a dragon in one and a snake on the other side, but you really just can't make it out. Almost looks like there's a fish eye, but that's just his fist. It'd be great to have the page without all the text boxes. Mm. It's sort of just ruin it a bit but it's a really good first page and the art's still on par because it's still larry harmer it's still doug who's writing and dick giordano who's the inca jan Brunner's the colorist ray <laughs> ray holloway's the letterer and roy thomas is still the editor and yep the i love the bits in the rain i just think they do the rain effects really well mm -hmm. and this is colleen's first ever appearance is this mysterious figure in this noir sort of setting but with a guy wearing this outfit so not really noir um, <laughs> oh yeah and she says he looks like a harlequin and yeah she gives him the trench coat and the hat and i'm like oh that is awesome because i was reading this in black and white first and i was thinking i really hope that's a costume when he comes out in that marvel heroes game and then i looked in the color and it's blue yeah and i just go well that's ruined <laughs> i thought it was brown i and it, i thought that would have been really cool like a sort of detective iron fist but it's blue and i'm just thinking, why did they choose blue? Just well, I think it's it's funny on, on the uh, panel where he's up in the house meeting the professor. The very first panel, he's got the coat fully on, so he has no no Kunlun collar popping up. And then the second panel, he's like, <laughs> starts taking it off, and the collar has yeah. like already sprung back to its <laughs> two feet in height behind his head. You can't crumple it. It, does, it never needs to be ironed because it's always just there. <laughs> But yeah, he looks really awesome in the hat and trench coat in the black and white version, but in the color version, it just looks sort of goofy, mm -hmm. unfortunately. But that, I love the bit where the two cultists attack him. How how awesome is that? And the fight is over so quick, and it's so silent that they're just gone by the time she notices anything. Well, she doesn't notice anything. Well, the two panels, actually, in the middle of that page almost look like something out of the shadow. Or the phantom when he was in here. Yeah. Yeah, no, you're right. That's cool. And I'm sure they've fought a fair few death cults in their time. Oh, yeah, both of them. Yep. Heavily in the death cults. Mm-hmm. It's one of the reasons I love this uh, story arc, really. It's just... It seems... It's 70s, but it's not 70s, if you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. It definitely seems reminiscent of the Golden Age a lot. Mm -hmm. I mean, oh, yeah, definitely. Well, I mean, he is based on a Golden Age character, so it makes sense. It's definitely... Yeah, um... Yep. The, the whole death cult stuff has been, yeah, going back to, like, 30s. Yeah. So it makes perfect sense for him to be doing it because of being based on Amazing Man. Yeah, and you're right, he definitely looks like the Shadow in his disguise. All right, so we go back to the apartment. He's introduced to Professor Wing, who knows his full first full real name. Yes. Daniel Raymond, so I, so I see Colleen. A most extraordinary young man he is. And then, for the most part, we go into a couple pages long flashback. And he noticed the fight outside as well, which was yep. pretty... And he, he knows who the cult is, and he's so casual about it. He's like, oh, they're an impatient lot. <laughs> you don't seem too worried at all. And then he lights his smoking pipe, which is great. He's a classic professor, archaeologist-looking guy. Yep. And we get the classic flashback sequence that's been seen in a lot of well, things. Even, even his first word bubble before the flashback is classic. You yeah. See, in the course of 
the vacations I I don't even know how to pronounce that word that I would call research I euphemistically mean, Asia quite extensively it was nine years ago at a site on one particular fascinating excavation in northern India that professor come quick we've made a great find I don't know why they're rednecks but hey, yeah I was just <laughs> thinking that's a very odd accent for Indians <laughs> But they find a book, because whenever you find books in the desert, ooh, that's a good thing, right? And there's an evil curse on it, apparently, and he laughed it off until that very first night he met his first acquaintance of the cult of Karakai, and he pretty much just shot him, so that'll do it. Right in the nuts. Yeah. Take that, Peckerwood. <laughs> oh, there's a bird freaking pecking on my window this morning. The idiot's just doing it for about half an hour, I had to scare it off. I'm just thought I'd mention that because it's really annoying. Yeah. <laughs> so he later learned that the cult wanted this book because they believed it contained the secret to the ultimate destruction of the fabled city of Kumun. But the script is in an extremely ancient language, so he was determined not to give it up until he'd been able to translate it. So he left India through a torturous passage in the Himalayas. So why didn't he just catch a plane instead, go to a city in India? But whatever. And along this route, he came upon a monk called Da Tempa. Hmm, do our readers remember him? Yeah, he looks exactly like the monk that told the story of the young white boy in Kung Lung to Harold Meacham. Yep, and he is the monk. And he's been tracked in a rock slide. So that sucks. And he told him what happened in Kung Lung, and that there was a youth called Daniel Ran whose parents were slain a year ago by a man called Meacham. But the youth has been adopted by the immortals of Kung Lung. You notice this because he's been to Kung Lung. And... He talks about, like, the Iron Fist legend, the heart of the dragon, you know, and he might become the immortal Iron Fist if he passed the test. And then he says, you must tell people the youth has been granted this chance. Then we may all hope to attain immortality. So and Those were his last words. Yes. And then he's dabbled in psychology, so he knew that Iron Fist would seek revenge rather than eternal life, which is uh, Mr. Psychologist, whatever. <laughs> you seem pretty self-confident. What if he didn't? <laughs> and coming from a city that appears on this world only once every ten years, it was a simple matter to calculate. When you'd be popping up at Meacham's. Yeah, how many other people have calculated this? If this guy's doing it. <laughs> so far, too? It's the local grocer's gonna do it as well. You have judged me correctly, Professor Wing. Even though Harold Meacham has been slain, I did not take my revenge. He was slain by someone else, probably a ninja, because <laughs> he didn't even see it. That's a good point. He did not actually see him get killed. He had got struck with the bullet to the head and was out. Yeah, and they do that a lot. Heroes, when they get shot, it's usually scraping their head and they get knocked out. I don't know why, but it always happens. And even the professor's like, this is getting too thick to handle. <laughs> yeah, this is getting too crazy even for me. How will I convince her of my innocence? Oh, just call her on the telephone. On the telephone? <laughs> mm. Yeah. Here's the directory. Let your fingers do the walking. Just look up Meacham Incorporated. And ask for her. I'm sure she's cooled off by now. Oh, okay. All right, let's just stop there. Because <laughs> there's a lot I want to talk about. Um, I mean, this whole sequence is a bit... Some of it's goofy, but I love all of it. I love the flashback sequence. The... Yes, good stuff there. Yeah, it's just... The monks the monks dying the last 5,000 words. <laughs> and it, just the classic uh, death cult attacking you in an archaeological dig when you dig up something they want. Mm-hmm. And, yes, the... a million times in every single archaeology movie on the planet. And it's never going to get old. I eat that crap up. It's like a freaking Call of Cthulhu module. I love that stuff. Just death cults and ancient artifacts and spooky stuff. Oh yeah, I didn't mention 260 for a taxi in the first part. Just, God, it used to be cheap. <sighs> <laughs> it's 1974. A cheeseburger was like a nickel. Anyway, um, so then the monk says to become the immortal Iron Fist. So... Not just Iron Fist, but the Immortal Iron Fist. And I think this is the first time that phrase is used, and that means that maybe the Tree of Life was part of becoming the Immortal Iron Fist. Mm -hmm. 
I don't think it's ever well, gone into again, so... I mean, technically, in this storyline, there has not been one before. Yeah, I'm just not sure if they're implying that the tree is part of the Iron Fist ritual, or if it's... I don't know. Maybe they just wanted to say Immortal Iron Fist, so it was cool, but... I'm or the not... fact that the, the, the possession of the Iron Fist is immortal. Because mm. cause back when I was reading these stories, I always considered, or thought, I should say, that if somehow he did die, the dragon would just wake back up. Like, the dragon's not dead. He didn't kill the dragon. The dragon's just kind of like in a coma. Yeah. And they just put him back in the cave and shut the door. Okay. And if Iron Fist was, was to die, then that power would just go back into the dragon. So by that, the power of the Iron Fist is immortal. It's forever. You can't technically stop that. Yeah, that's 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 good actually. It's a good way to look at it because I was just confused. Kind of like saying that Danny Rand is now just the current vessel. Yeah, well, it definitely goes into that late, way later on. So he rings. What the hell's her name? Joy. Did you say her name. I love Joy? I I love that by the way. Just oh, just call her up. <laughs> just there just, we go. Yeah. Police might not be tapping the line or anything. Just call her up and say, hey. And he's like, oh, of course. What a good idea. These two guys are lunatics. They're not going to get anything done together because they're both just idiots. <laughs> but so he brings Joy up and Joy answers the phone with her father's corpse still in the background. Yeah. Oh, this is Joy. Oh, this I is can't a bit talk soon. to you now. <laughs> <laughs> Meet me at the arcade in an hour. She wants to talk at an arcade. You young kids in the arcade, I swear. Mm. <laughs> mm, that's the one on Times Square. And then he proceeds to tell him just, like, how to get there in, like, three things. Oh, do this, this, and this, you'll be there. And it's been shut down for years as well. I'm not familiar with this arcade, Professor. And then he, uh... Throws him a subway token. Ping! Here's a token, be careful. By the way, I got a job for you. So, research assistant... And a bodyguard against these annoying fanatics from the cult of Karakai. You should be taking this more seriously, my friend. You're just a bit too chilled out for a bunch of guys trying to kill you. And Joy immediately calls her uncle and says, Yep, he's gone right into the trap, because he just called me up and did whatever I said. <laughs> so obviously Ward has set a trap, and he's talking to two guys who look pretty nasty, and he's telling them to get on it, and go to the arcade before Iron Fist gets there. And Iron Fist exits the train, and I'm disappointed we get a... We, I'm disappointed we didn't get a sequence of Iron Fist on the train with a bunch of commuters. <laughs> but he I'm exits the... looking at his outfit. <laughs> he ditched the uh, overcoat. So he is going through the dingy-looking subway, and then he has attained his objective, the arcade. So he swings the two doors open, just like a Western, and... Speaking of Western... Mm-hmm. A ah. rush of air assaults his ears, and he whirls instantly and lunges for, forward, delivering a crushing ram's head blow, and snaps the neck of a novelty dummy. Fast there we draw. see like a quick draw, fast yeah. draw, arcade game, with its head cocked to one side now, and he cracks a nervous smile until a second sound scrapes from the darkness. And the arcade explodes with abrupt frenzy. And there's all sorts of crazy people. There's a guy with a ha harpoon and a lasso. A guy with two sighs. guy with a grappling no hook. guy with a lasso. They both have the grappling hook things. It just oh, like okay. Oh, because... circle there. Yep. In the superior black and white, it's sometimes hard to tell. I've started to notice something. Yes. All villains apparently tuck their pants into their boots. <laughs> they're, they're cultists, man. It's like the uniform. They all wear riding riding boots, and they all tuck their pants into them. Yep. And then he greets them. Whap. Bok. <laughs> With a dragon stamp kick. Upward sweep. Monkey blow. He's pretty much just beating them up for now. And then they, since they're fanatic cultists, they persist. And it's obvious that they too have mastered the stamina and endurance of the martial arts. And even well, more shocking, they, yep. they double team them there, where the one guy grapples his arm and then ducks as the other guy uses him as a springboard to jump over Iron Fist's head, and using the same weapon, 
grapples his other wrist so then they can pull him tight. Yeah, that's great. And then he's, uh, in a couple of great panels, he's trapped in between them because they're just pulling him. And you see the two, they're all just circling him really ominously and he's sort of looking pissed off. Um, and they stalk forward knowing that they'll end, he knows that they'll end his life in seconds. And then there's actually another team waiting outside behind these doors saying, oh, we're not going to be needed at all. And then the ninja comes in and just, well, messes their shit up and kills, well, pretty much all of them, I think. You don't see... He kills kills the four waiting. You don't see much blood or anything, but it's pretty obvious what happens. Then Iron Fist dispatches the other four. Yep, he activates the Iron Fist in both hands, it looks like, and just pulls them together, knocks them out, and then kicks the other two by leaping into the air and just smashing him in the face. Yeah, I really don't know why he activates the Iron Fist there, because he doesn't actually use it for anything. Yeah, I thought that too. I was also caught up on that. I mean, does he need the Iron Fist for upper body strength? I thought he just would have been able to do it without it. Well, his original origin, like, out of Marvel Universe, he could summon the Iron Fist to boost other abilities. Okay. So that might have been him just boosting his, you know, upper arm strength to smash those two guys head first into one another. And that... Or pulling them tight. Oh, yeah, actually, it's pretty much just him using his chi because he uses his chi sometimes if he has to to augment some of his abilities, especially healing. So I remember in Defenders when he got shot in the chest and he just, like, shot the bullet out of his chest <laughs> with his chi mm-hmm. and name all there and he just goes, impressive, and they keep fighting. And I <laughs> thought that was awesome. <laughs> And yes, so the ninja is there, and Iron Fist is just the finally like, who are you? The sword clean with the, a, a newspaper. newspaper. Not sure how well that would work, but whatever. It's like, who are you? Why have you followed me? What is your purpose in going to Meacham's office and probably killing him as well? And the ninja just remains silent, tosses the newspaper, which he used to wipe his sword off with, and Iron Fist looks at the newspaper, and it says, Daily News, not Daily Bugle. Iron Fist sought in Micho murder. So that was... With a big splotch of ketchup on it. And you wonder, will the ninja someday hunt you too? Next issue, Batrock's Brigade. Just when you thought this series was getting non-stupid with Joker people and triple irons, we have Batrock next issue. <laughs> Sacre bleu. The man with the worst French accent in Marvel. Uh... That fight was awesome, though. Oh, yeah, all the fights in this were good. And the panel, where he's like, even more shocking is the fact that they master the art of weaponry, just all of his face there. Mm -hmm. Just the very shadowy sort of stuff. And I gotta say, I really love that bit where he tosses him the coin, the subway token. Just the whole way the shadows are done on that page. Well, yeah, well, it's... The artwork in this issue still stands up. Yeah. That's without a doubt. And um, really, in this first run, there's not really a lot of bad art, period. I guess there's good art, but then there's just the standout panels. Like, that panel with the token is probably my favorite panel in this entire issue. But the whole back and forth with the professor, I think, is just hysterical. (laughs) It's just so unintentionally goofy. (laughs) It's just... Oh, just call her up. I mean, her dad only just died, right? You'll be fine. Let's call up a grieving woman, <laughs> and she'll listen to reason. Especially well, if she thinks she's completely it. nonchalant about about. Oh, I, I can't talk right now. The police are here. Yeah, don't you think my, that's weird? My Iron dad's Fist? still cold. <laughs> yeah, look, I can't talk right now. I haven't even been to the. We haven't even gone to the morgue yet, so. <laughs> I haven't even put the sheet over the body. Yeah, just so we can talk a bit later. Even though I said I'd. Send a thousand men after you last time we talked, and I'm just, just has no social skills at this point, I guess, so he's like, okay, seems legitimate. And, yeah, the Western nod was pretty funny. It's, uh, these early books are very clever, just they pay a lot of tributes to a lot of older comics, mm-hmm. which is nice, especially for that era. It's not sort of stuck in the 70s. And not that the 70s era was bad, but, eh, the 30s is better. <laughs> No, another another great solid issue. It goes yep. rather quick compared to some of the other ones. And a lot does happen, but it just goes quick. It just flows very well. Now, overall, I think <laughs> I think this issue, I fully recommend that if you can read it in black and white. Oh, here we go. Yeah, I'm sorry, but it's just that <laughs> much better. 
in black and white. I feel like I'd be doing a disservice to our listeners, all three of them, if I didn't <laughs> say that you should read this in black and white. And it, it, what really makes a difference this issue is there's no stupid bad guys. There's no Triple Iron or uh, Scythe. Triple Iron just looks absurd, and Scythe just wouldn't shut up about Joker. Right. So and We have trained lackeys and the ninja. And they're just not saying anything stupid, so it doesn't really take you out of it that right. much. And I'm just going to say again, I love cults. They're awesome. Put cults in every story and I'll be happy. And, yeah, it, it just goes from this to Batrock. That's sort of dumb. Yeah, it takes quite a leap. Oh, leap. I see what you did there. <laughs> Glad you caught it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and there's all this cool... This, all this cool death cult stuff is still going on. But yes. But just Batrock's there now with his ridiculous mustache. It's like, why did they put him there? I guess he's a savant master, so he's another martial artist they can have him go toe-to-toe with, and probably the first actual... He's probably the first character he comes across that's in another comic. I think would I be yeah, correct? Every, yeah, because everybody else so everyone else so far has just been Iron Fist. Is, right, it's been all new new characters. This is somebody who was not created in this storyline. This is someone they're pulling from something else. I mean, hey, it would have been marketable. You know, it's Batroc. He's another martial arts master and he appears in Iron Fist. It definitely would have made sales. But yeah, good issue. What did you think? No, I liked it. Yep. And like like we discussed, a, a lot of good fight scenes. Uh, they didn't really say anything too stupid, so it didn't take you out of the fight. Yep. Uh, very well executed panels, good action sequences, good fight sequences, um, great pencil work. Again, I'm looking at the original issue where it looks like the colorist fell asleep on a lot of yeah. these pages. And and what I mean what I what I mean when I say that is there's a, a crap load of color bleeding. Yeah, it's very blurry. It's blurry. It's like Iron Fist's green rolls into the yellows, and sometimes the yellow's not yellow at all. It's still green. It's really bad in like the next two issues, where he goes down and fights the Death Cult. In that issue, it's supposed to be a little darker. They colored him green the entire uh... issue. Yeah. And I'll actually have to look in the masterwork to see if they corrected that, but uh, in that issue, his yeah. entire outfit is green in almost every panel. The masterworks is great. Uh, his entire outfit is green, but it definitely goes darker green when it gets darker. Mm-hmm. So it's not just I mean, just even bright. the yellow, even the yellow is green in those issues. <laughs> Follow this. Is it the same colorist for all these issues? How are they, like, letting him continue? Especially with the really high standard of Larry Harmer's art, and he's just Honestly, I butchering don't think it. Honestly, I cared. I think as long as they met the deadlines yeah. and got out on time, they're just like, oop, yep, he's green. <laughs> Let it go. Yep. I'm going to look up Larry Harmer because uh, he's well, I just... I posted on the Facebook page my autograph. Yeah, page. that's right. He's just, he's really good. I used, I, I was saying, like, I wish Gil Kane didn't leave and stuff, but Larry Harmer is doing a fine job filling in. I think this technically is his last, isn't it? Oh, no, really? Let's have a look. Well, it's fitting that we get Batrock and we lose the artist. <laughs> yep. Arvel Jones takes over next issue. And i got to give him credit. He keeps up the same quality. He's not he bad. not bad. He's Colleen's not bad. hair gets a lot bigger. <laughs> I think Arvel might be only that issue, though. But solid book. Pick it up. It's an essential. It's in a new epic collection. Yes, yeah, you can it's find this obviously issue. Obviously in the Masterworks. The yeah, the masterworks, the epic collection, the essential, they're all worth getting. They all clean up. I'm well, I haven't seen the epic collection, but I'm assuming it cleans up the art, the coloring specifically. Yeah, and I haven't seen that one yet myself. I think I have a Power Man and Iron Fist epic collection, and that seemed to like it's not as good quality as the masterworks, but there's no like color blur or anything. Mm-hmm. So they clean that up. But yes, and as we said before, uh, they're going up in price, so get them soon, because the longer you wait, the closer this Iron Fist Netflix show is to coming out. And one of the plus sides is more Iron Fist trades might be released. But just in the right. event they're not, pick some up now. And especially... Honestly, I yep. don't think there's much more they could do. Yeah, it's true. They're doing the Epic Collection. They've well, just... they have the Epic, and they have... All those solos in that one book. Yeah, there's... There's actually two different, like, Iron Fist trades that collect miniseries and solo stuff. And other than that, 
I mean, there's the, uh... Immortals all collected. Is Living Weapon in one volume yet? No, it's two. Why is it? That's weird. It's been a while. You think they would have made broke, it? They broke it to two. Yeah, that's what I was waiting for, for them to do one hardcover, and I would grab that. Yeah, same. Because, I mean, it's only 12 issues. Don't know why it's not in a hardcover. Yeah. But also, something to realize and think about, Luke Cage is coming first to Netflix. And that actually means the Power Man and Iron Fist issues are going to shoot up in price first. Oh, okay. Because Luke, Luke Cage is in them. So yep. if you are trying to get the issues, one, I'm sorry, because it's ridiculous what they're asking for those first appearances. Issues 48 to, like, 51 are ridiculous. Mm. And then there, of course, is a Saber 2 second, third, and fourth appearance in Power Man and Iron Fist. They're, like, the next most expensive issues. But if you are trying to grab the individual issues, for the love of God, start with the Power Man and Iron Fist right now and try to get as many as you can. Yeah. Because those are going to bloom once the net... Actually, not even before his series starts... He's introduced in the next one. That's all. Yep. Yeah, get get Power Man and Iron Fist now. There's a couple of epic collections. I think. I think there might be two. I'm not sure. Because well, only one's out so far. I'm sure a second one will be coming. Oh, the okay. Second one so far. But yeah, so Luke far. Cage is actually on Netflix in the Jessica Jones. On the plus side, by the time the Luke Cage series comes out, we'll probably be in Power Man and Iron Fist. Yeah. So we'll be sort of being able to talk to. Well, I don't. Mm. I don't know because uh, we're gonna hit upon the uh, magazine stuff. Ah, oh, yep, the Deadly Hands of Kung Fu. So if you think about it, we still have five more issues of this, fifteen more issues of that, and they're like shorter stories. You can do three and one and stuff. Oh yeah. So contact us at heaps of places. We have Facebook. Sons of the Dragon, the Immortal Iron Fist podcast. Just type in Sons of the Dragon podcast and you'll be able to find us. We have a YouTube. Just type in Iron Fist podcast and you'll find our episodes pretty easily. We have a Twitter at Iron Fist podcast. We have a SoundCloud. SoundCloud.com forward slash Sons of the Dragon. Spaces between Sons of the Dragon are hyphens. And last but definitely not least, contact us on our email. Sons of the Dragon podcast at gmail.com feel free to send us in your artwork any feedback you have tell us that we're awesome tell us that we're crap talk about the issue with us because we love to discuss the issue with other people because we do a lot of speculation but we're curious about what all you guys think as well definitely so yeah. your artwork yes and we'll post it on the Facebook page and stuff so next week we will be covering Marvel Premiere 20 which is titled oh well, which, which is three, allegedly three titled titles. Allegedly titled. Titles. Um, Batrox Brigade. Batrox Brigade. So until Woo-hoo! then, may your fists become unto things of iron if you're someone who is in that line of work, or if not, just may you have a nice, relaxed week. Peace. Peace. Peace.